Armando, hey. I thought today would be a good day for us to show them what a typical day in the life of a farmer is. All right. Probably for every hour we spend growing, picking, planting, there's an hour or more worth of construction, mechanical work, hydraulics, welding. I mean, we got to know it all. If you're someone who's planning to be a homesteader or live off grid or live like I live, soft grid, you're going to have to get familiar with small engines, small two-stroke gasoline engines. Your grandparents probably remember this because they used to have to do it in their car, but you have to actually choke one of these engines to start it. And it so happens that my choke is broken. But we're farmers. We're not gonna let that stop us, are we, Armando? Nah. There's supposed to be a linkage running from there to there, but it fell out. So all I'm gonna do is set the choke by hand. And we're gonna start this sucker up. If we didn't know the way a two-stroke engine worked, we'd have to go find parts or take that in and get it fixed. We'd have to find some other job to do today. This trigger here, this linkage that controls the choke, also controls the kill switch. So once the tension went, the kill switch went too. So what I did, knowledge of how a two-stroke engine works, I just removed the wire that goes to the spark plug. That served, that's exactly what a kill switch does, is it cuts off the electricity to this wire. So I just removed it from the spark plug and did the same thing. All right, Armando, that's job one. We're done, buddy. Let's get some water. And what you want to do next? I didn't plant in okra. Want to plant some okra? All right, let's go plant some okra. This is okra. Okra grows really well here in the winter into the spring. All right, so what you doing now, Armando? I noticed you got yourself some, what's that, some potting soil? soil. soil. We're going to put a little bit of soil, so yeah. like, since we had those planted on a little patch, yeah. so it, will, like, it won't die. We always have piles of soil here, potting soil, topsoil. Um, your, you know, your garden bed, stuff like that. You always want to have like soil with organic material. So like you're just creating it. It just gets better and better. So Armando's going to one of our piles and he's taking some soil to augment just the natural stuff in the ground here. And we got one of our YouTube subscribers, Doug, just pulled up. So let's go get Doug. I'll be right back. This is Doug, everyone. Get in the picture, hello, Doug. Hello. He's one of the subscribers. Doug, you, can I say your name of on course, YouTube? Yes. But I'm not sure if I'll get it right. It's Doug, D A M T C A R. At Comcast.net. Okay, Doug Damped Car. So when you see yep. comments under that name, that's yep. him. <laughs> All right, Armando, show us the process here, buddy. Well, we already started like planting. Uh, we had to take, take some from the pops and just put it in. Just pinch a little hole with your yeah. fingers. Yeah, and then put, put it, it in, in there. And make sure like, to, to tie a little bit so the air won't let just go in. Right, you don't want any air bubbles underneath the surface, mm -hmm. right? Nope. And you're putting one long row about an inch apart from each other. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Show me that uh, Julie mango tree that you have. Okay, so that's loaded with flowers. Send me that picture. Okay. I want to show these guys that. Come on, I'll show you the Julie okay. I planted. Now, how big was that Julie when you planted it? Uh, Doug just showed me a picture of his Julie. It's got to be what, about 12, 13 feet high? Yes. Maybe 15 feet across? Uh, no, 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 about 15 feet across, but no more than 10 feet tall. Okay. No and more. how long ago did you plant that? 17 years. Yeah, they're a very slow <laughs> grower, right? Very, yeah. very, very. So I put a Julie in here yep. because yep. Doug brought a Julie mangoes to my house. And, and I taste something? I just now see it's flowering. See it? It's flowering, yeah. yes. Yeah. So the reason I put the Julie here is because I got a carambola right there and I have a jabata cava yeah. tree uh -huh. right over here. And so I know this is a slow grower and yeah. I don't have to worry about it this getting... Will, uh, for, for it to get chest high, yeah. it's going to be many years yet. Yeah, which is yeah. fine. That's yeah. a great place for mm -hmm. it. You want to pick a jujube? Oh, yes. Let's I have never had a jujube. Let's go get one. So here's the jujube tree, Doug. Let's see if we can find a, a ripe one. This oh, guy here... That's what it looks like. Yeah, it looks oh. like a little Granny Smith oh, apple. Yeah. Um, well, here's one that fell. A lot of times they fall when they're ripe. Oh, so, okay. oh yeah, it feels soft. Let's taste test this one here. Oh. Let me cut oh, it in half. Yeah. This is going to be Doug's first taste of a jujube. A jujube is like yeah. a... It looks like a little Granny Smith apple. Yep, yep. It's got the texture of an apple okay. and it even kind of tastes a little like an apple with a honey taste right. but okay. i want to let me just see if it's bite into it bite into it yeah oh uh, it's not fully ripe 
It's not fully ripe. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it, right now it tastes kind of like an apple that wasn't fully ripe. Yeah. It's still it's fairly sweet though. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's, it's there. there. Mm. These need about another month on the tree. We usually pick mm. them the end of February, beginning of March. Mm. Want to pick some nasberries? Sure. All right, Doug, give, give that guy a little scratch with your fingernail. You see how it's like a brown, brown or a very yeah. light yellowish yeah. green? Yeah. Go ahead and pick that guy, but be uh, careful because oh yeah. there's going to be a sap. Oh yeah. You knew. I'm, you knew. I'm familiar you knew. with that. <laughs> yeah, you knew. And see, yeah. when they're not gushing sap like that, mm -hmm. that means it's, it's also yep. in season. So here I want to show you. You ever see these Everglades tomatoes? Yeah. They're called an Everglades grape tomato. Mm. They're a tiny little thing. Got a little tiny, yeah. Look, it's only that big. And they have such a, like, such a tomato flavor. Like, wow. just, it reminds you of, like, well, he's too young, but it, when, you know, what, what tomatoes yeah. used to yeah, taste yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, like. You know that. what I mean? Or, like, a nice, fresh, garden-grown uh, tomato. Yep. So, anyway, anyth these are native. Nothing, nothing better than a, 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 a freshly picked garden oh, tomato. It's, it's the best. Not, I mean, it's not, the best. Not, yeah. No. All right, so here's some of those Everglades tomatoes I started maybe 10 days ago. So, Armando. What are we doing here? We got well, the... Well, uh, we're planting these small tomatoes to the small pups. So look, he takes out one little... Yeah. One little plant, puts it in like that, and there we have it. Armando, now that you got the okra in over here, mm -hmm. we got to build out a little irrigation, get some water to them guys, right? Oh, yeah, yes. the okra needs a lot of water. <laughs> All right, let me go get the... Uh, let me go get the stuff. A really simple and easy way to do irrigation is with poly hose. Super easy to run this stuff. It's not very expensive. And you run the hose wherever you want it. And then you attach your sprinklers to the hose. And then once you're attached, you can decide what type of sprinkler head makes sense for what it is you're trying to water. Hey, let's show them what I'm talking about, Armando. So you got the hose there in your hand, right? And that's the yeah. end. That's the end of the line. The other end is hooked up to the water source. And then every so often where we want it, we just hook in one of these sprinklers by punching a hole in the line and just attaching a little piece of hose that runs to a sprinkler. So we found the end of the line. So Armando, you could just cut that off. Here we go. Try not to cut my finger off, buddy. <laughs> Oopsie, that's not good. I gotta get a band-aid. All right, I had a little bit of an oopsie, but what I was showing you is how we could uh, recover, you know, our old pieces from this. Well, actually, we'll use this plug at the end of what we're doing right now. Exactly. Okay, so let's show them what we're doing, Armando. Okay, so this is the end of the line. So I'm going to put a clamp on this side, and then you already got the connector on your side. So we're just going to push the connectors together. Yeah. Okay, there's one clamp nice and tight. Okay. Do we have this tool here and it punctures? We're going to puncture a hole, and just the main thing you want to make sure is when you poke the hole, you don't poke it out the other side. So go ahead, everyone, poke the hole. Like that. Okay, so then pull it out, and there we have a hole, and now show them what you put in. So then we just punch, I don't know if you heard it snap, but the end of these little sprinklers, the end just punches right inside the hole and it seals it actually seals and doesn't leak now there's lots of different kinds of sprinkler heads we can use and so uh armando why don't you turn on the water we'll see what this red one does and if we want to use it or if we want to try a different one all right so that red gives a star pattern and that would be good to use if we had like you know we have this row here of okra right here then if we had a second row it would be hitting both uh why don't we take a look at oh actually here Let's show them this one next. Now, if we wanted to focus the water just on the one row, we can use a different top. We can use a different sprinkler head. Okay, so that one does like a half moon, see? So that one takes like a basic green one, and then you just put the insert in, and you could control the flow. And you have different options with these inserts depending on the way you turn them. And these here, you could go as simple or complicated as you want. You saw you can have different types of sprinkler heads. You can also install a shutoff valve <laughs> halfway up. Uh, this one just happened to come that way. I'd never get that complicated with it. But if you had a garden where you had certain things that needed water every day and other things that maybe once every third day, mm -hmm. you would just put this little shutoff on it. Yep. There it's open, there it's closed. 
All right, Armando, you doing one more? There he's poking the hole. You want me to shut the water out for you? Are you good? All right. That guy goes in. And there we have another half moon, right? And now we have water to this new row of okra. And we did it by tapping into an already existing line that I used to irrigate my bananas. See that? So Armando, we got the fence put in, we did the tomatoes, we did the okra. I gave Doug a little tour of the farm. Uh, you wanna dig a hole and put this 25 gallon mango in the ground? I think we had to do this. Well, any other day. <laughs> not today, right? Not today. Now, when we put this sucker in the ground, we're going to use a machine. Yeah. We're not going to dig this one in ourselves. So, Armando, I, I feel like that was enough work for today. Now, you guys just saw us editing through it. That was a yeah. pretty full work day. But uh, maybe next video, we'll repot some of these. Uh, we'll up pot them. Put yeah. them up a size in pot, right? Yeah. Although, this guy here, I might want to put right in the ground. And then, like I was joking about, but we do have to get this big mango here in the ground at some point. One other thing we talked about is clearing a lot more land here and maybe putting in more crops, yeah, more like garden uh, row, uh, row yeah. crops. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll put some squash, uh, eggplant. Egg yeah, plants. yeah, we could do eggplant, we could do squash. But I, I think that's gonna do it for today. Okay. Maybe we'll ride down into town and get some parts that we can fix some of our stuff next time. And, uh, but you got to see us fix a fence, which is typical farming work, right? Yeah, Last video, cool. they got to see us digging holes. They saw us planting the okra, uh, something a little different that a lot of farmers don't do. You saw I had a, a YouTube subscriber come and I took you along as I gave him a little bit of a tour. Uh, I injured myself. Funny thing, first time ever I talked about safety in a video earlier <laughs> with the chainsaw and then I damn cut my thumb open. Yeah. But uh, I think it was a, a pretty good day, a pretty good work day. Yeah, it was a really good day. Yeah. A lot of what I talk about on these videos is knowledge you could put to work growing in your own backyard if you want to keep a garden, if you want to grow some fruit trees and stuff like that. But if you're the type of person who'd rather skip the growing and just get to the eating, then you could buy your fruit from us at guacfarm.com. G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M dot com. Now remember, if you go out there looking for something and don't see it, agriculture is seasonal. But we have avocados, mangoes, mame, sapodilla, caimito, uh, and what else Sopote. am I missing? Sopote, we got uh, Monstera Deliciosa, we got the t-shirts and hats, and coming soon, we're gonna sell cuttings. We'll be selling cuttings for grafting from our mango trees and from our avocado trees. Me and Armando got to drive down into town and pick up some parts for our equipment. While we do that, you go to guacfarm.com. We will see you on the next video.